we're going to talk about the names of the tools, what they measure, and the base units that you would use when measuring with these particular tools. So the first one that we're going to look at, let me make this a little bit bigger for you, is going to be a triple beam balance scale. Now the triple beam balance scale is used to measure mass, which is much different than weight. Mass is the amount of matter that's in an object, whereas weight has to do with the force of gravity that's on an object. And the base units that we're going to use to measure with the triple beam balance scale or mass are going to be grams. And we usually abbreviate that with just a lowercase g. The next scale that we're going to look at, um, this can actually measure um, a couple of different things. Um, but we can also call this a couple of different names. Um, you can hear this called an electronic scale or a digital scale. Digital scales are a bit easier to work with, um, whereas with a triple beam balance scale, you have to make sure that it is on zero when you start out, um, and you have to be very careful with those measurements. The electronic scale is much easier to use. They can be battery operated, and sometimes they have a plug-in as well. Now, you can use um, electronic scales to measure mass or weight. Most of them have um, a button that you push to go between the different units and what you want to measure. Um, in science, though, we are usually looking to measure mass with this particular electronic or digital scale. And again, the base unit for mass is going to be grams. The next piece of equipment we're going to look at, this is called a spring scale. Uh, this is similar to the scale um, that you may see at the grocery store when you go and you want to get the weight of your bananas, for instance. Usually when you go to the store, they'll say, you know, bananas are so much money per pound or the apples are, you know, most fruit is, is like that. And so there's usually a scale hanging, um, hanging up for you to measure those in and um, that's a version of the spring scale. And so spring scale is used to measure weight. And for the metric system, we don't measure weight in pounds because pounds is going to be your standard system. But for the metric system, we're going to use Newtons, abbreviated with a capital N. Um, these were named after Sir Isaac Newton, who was the one that discovered gravity. He didn't invent gravity. Gravity is a force that was already there. But he discovered that it existed. And so um, since weight, being very different from mass, um, has to do with the gravitational pull that's on an object, then we're going to measure that using weight. Now, you could also say that the spring scale is used to measure force as well because with weight, it's based on that force of gravity. Um, it may also be defined as a a tool that's used to measure the force of an object. This next one here is uh, very simple. Most people have seen these or used these. This is a ruler. If it's even larger, we would call it a meter stick. A meter stick is approximately 3.3 feet. Um, if you want to look at it in terms of a yardstick, it's just a little bit bigger than a yard. Um, and the ruler or meter stick this is what you're going to use to measure distance. You could also measure length, width, height, things of that nature with it. And you're going to use the metric system and the base unit when we're measuring with um, a meter stick, of course, is going to be meters. Now, if you're measuring with the smaller ruler, you're going to want to use these centimeters because that's going to be the metrics. Um, on the ruler. Now this next uh, piece of equipment, we're getting into the ones that are going to be measuring liquids and in particular they're going to be measuring liquid volume. This next piece of equipment is called an Erlenmeyer flask. The Erlenmeyer flask measures liquid volume and the base unit for measuring liquid volume is going to be liters. Now when you're measuring with an Erlenmeyer flask, it's highly unlikely that your flask is going to be large enough to actually measure in liters, so they're more commonly seen measuring in milliliters. 
This next piece of equipment is called a beaker. This is probably the one you have seen uh, the most, maybe most familiar with. It is also going to measure liquid volume. And again, the base units for volume are going to be liters. And just like the Erlenmeyer flask, uh, more often than not, um, you're not going to see it measured in liters. It's going to be milliliters because that's a much smaller amount. Now, the most accurate of these three is going to be your graduated cylinder. Your graduated cylinders usually um, have a lot more lines on them. And so we can get closer to the exact measurement. A lot of times they will count by ones or even decimal points. So you can get really, really accurate with these graduated cylinders. They also measure liquid volume. And we also like to use them to measure the volume of objects that are not regularly shaped. And by that, I mean, if it's not um, a nice perfect cube or square where you can do length times width times height, then we can often put them in the graduated cylinder and use something called water displacement in order to measure the volume of that object. And with water displacement, you would fill or, you know, add some water to your graduated cylinder, just enough to cover the object. And let's say you had something that was irregularly shaped, like um, a random rock that you picked up outside. As long as it can fit inside of a graduated cylinder, you can use the cylinder. Okay, so you'd fill that up. You would read the graduated cylinder to see how much water you put in it. You drop in your rock. You would read and see how much that water level goes up. And that difference, the amount that that water level goes up, that's going to be the volume of your irregularly shaped object. So we can use um, graduated cylinders not only for liquid volume, but also solid objects that are just different, different shapes. And of course, you're going to use liters as your base unit for this as well. But again, most of them are much smaller. So you're going to be using milliliters. This next piece of equipment also measures volume. This is called a pipette. Some people call it a pipette. Either one is perfectly fine. Um, when we're measuring with a pipette, it also measures liquid volume. But it measures a very small amount of liquid volume. This is very similar to like a medicine dropper that you would have in your kitchen. Because it is so small, even though the base unit are liters, you're going to measure this using milliliters okay um, the standard pipette has anywhere between one and three milliliters is all that it will hold okay so they are extremely small another common piece of equipment that you are going to use is called a thermometer now the thermometer is going to measure the temperature of a substance and when we're measuring temperature we're no longer talking about how hot or cold an object is, even though that is a, that is the definition of temperature. Um, it's a little elementary, and so if you are in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade, um, you need to define that temperature with something a, a little a little more advanced. And so when we think about temperature, we think about it in terms of the atoms. You know, everything is made up of atoms, and they're constantly moving, and we define temperature as how quickly those atoms are moving. When you heat something up, the atoms are going to move much faster. When you slow or when you cool something off, those atoms are going to slow down. And so we look at temperature in terms of how fast the atoms are moving. And for the metric system, we're going to use degrees Celsius in order to measure temperature. Now this last piece of equipment, these are called test tubes. These are really good for holding liquids. Oops. Okay. Um, the test tubes that I have um, in my classroom, they do not have any units of measurement on them. They don't even have lines on them. Usually you're going to measure your volume out in one of the other pieces of equipment we've talked about, maybe a graduate cylinder or an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, and then you're going to add it to the test tube and it's going to use it as um, it's going to be used as a as a piece of equipment to hold those liquids more than anything else. Okay. Um, if you do happen to have a set with units of measurement on them because they are holding liquids, 
more than likely they're going to be using the base unit of liters um, or milliliters because they're usually much smaller. So one thing to remember when you're using scientific tools um, is that you need to measure more than one time. So don't just measure the volume once and then pour it into whatever your experiment is. Uh, measure at least twice. Make sure you get the right or the same amount both times. Um, it's very important for us to be as accurate as possible, especially when we're doing um, experiments like this.